Hello! In this video, I'm going to teach you how to start a new game in Galactic Civilizations 4. When you first open the game, you'll come to here. There are two main menus. This row on the left, and a little thing on the bottom. The only thing going on on the bottom is the options and the ship designer. But back to starting the game. You have New Game, and you have Quick Start. Quick Start has whatever your last game was that you loaded already set up there. And New Game is the menu to change what's set there. We only have four playable races in the alpha version of the game, but it looks like the first version of the game is going to come with 17 different options and uh, there's going to be a customizable character. The funny thing is when you pick a civilization, right now, at least for the alpha, you actually have to customize. So I'm going to play with these next game because they're new and they're an aquatic race. So you click the customize button and you can adjust the levels like there's my plus two, plus one, minus one, minus two on every different sector. But you could do so much more than that. You can change the style of the ships to be a completely different style if you want. You can change the colors, the type of planet, the name of your planet. You can even adjust the foreground and the background for your picture, the name of your leader, the name so right now the custom race technically isn't available but in actuality you can still change everything and basically build your own thing from scratch but for right now I'm gonna keep it exactly the way they made it now you go to your next window over here uh, this is a standard thing and then they have three different options over here so you got your galaxy size I'm playing small because it makes more sense and also uses less processing but that's for four to six players if you want to play a game and have every civilization well that's you plus the 16 other ones right here and you could actually go to a max of 24 so the middle one, Constellation, is the biggest you need. And they actually have a galaxy with uh, 64. So I guess when they make all the expansion sets, that will be like the largest possible one out there. Or if you just want to play a game with a bunch of dead space, you can. But for me, I'm going to go with Parsec. Now starting sectors, that's something new to this game. You have a sort of section that at the beginning of the game, you're there, you can't go outside your starting section until you get to a certain level. Um, you can adjust the size of it. Since it's a small map, I'm gonna go with a small starting section. And then you can choose to start near an AI which will be right next to them since it's close or a distance from an AI uh, and then you can also choose to start alone say if you want to fight like a whole bunch of pirates or whatever at the beginning of the game and fight the other Siths later I think I'm gonna go with that for my next game then difficulty level they have seven different difficulty levels Normal is actually only level three, and then there are like four ones after that for super hard. But in the last game I played, uh, even beginner is not a total cakewalk. And I think in one game they actually had a difficulty level called cakewalk. All right, star frequency, I want that abundant. Planet frequency, I want that abundant. It looks like you have uh, five different options. I want habitable planets abundant and then uh, for extreme planets in my case I'm an aquatic race so I kind of want extreme planets around. So coming down to the resources sections I'm gonna keep that abundant for obvious reasons. 
asteroids they're not exactly the same thing as resources sometimes they have good stuff in there but I'm gonna reduce them a little bit uh, nebulas just kind of get in the way a lot and black holes on a small map you always have to go around them and I don't want a bunch of black holes in the way so I'm making them rare artifacts your precursor relics uh, you can survey them but they also fight back so I put mine occasional because I don't want to fight them that much. I want anomalies as abundant as possible because you can survey them without having to fight them. And pirates? Well this game's going to be about fighting at the beginning. So I'll make them abundant. Actually come to think of it, I'll go ahead and get some more relics since I'm going to be fighting a lot when I start alone. And Ascension Crystals, we're not having any uh, Ascension victories. This is a conquering race, so I'll just put them uh, rare. And now you go to your victory conditions. So if you want to make sure that people don't win in other ways, like you're trying to get a conquest victory, but you don't want someone to research before you get there, you can turn them off. There are five main types of victories, conquest, influence, research, ascension, and alliance. And then a turn limit ends it if no one gets it by then. Now for the game pacing and research rate, I would have put a little bit more time into getting to know all of my technologies. So I'm gonna turn it slow and game pacing I want it to go ahead and move slow this is how it was set to default uh, I guess you can disable tech brokering if you want you can disable AI surrendering so that they fight till the last stand now you hit the next button and it goes to opponents and so it automatically picked three for me there are a total of 16 that you can choose from if you want to make a medium sized map. I want to have this particular uh, map show all brand new civilizations. Ones that didn't exist in the previous version of the game. And so you can't play as all of these but you can uh, fight against them. And then if you hit the next button, it automatically starts your game for you. Thank you for watching another episode of SS Street Fighter. Leave a like, leave a comment, and click subscribe to join the Street Fighter arm. I'd also like to send a thank you to my Patreon supporters, Charles and Nancy.